Connor, thank you for joining me. A disappointing postponement of our Tuesday night fixture against Eastleigh. Has this helped us in any way with regards to player recovery, and especially for those coming back from injury? Uh, obviously, it gives us another week. I mean, obviously, I've know i been put in this Tuesday coming, so it gives us another week to get players back. Obviously, that does help. But, listen, we were happy for the game to go ahead. We, had a, we, had a, we felt like we had a strong team. Uh, we had bodies back from the Bromley game anyway, so we, we were confident enough to play the game. But uh, the way it's gone with the weather, it was, it was torrential, so it was pretty, pretty bad. So there was, there was no way around it anyway, so that's the way it goes. We obviously prep it. Uh, the Woking game now tomorrow and move on to EC when it comes back round. So on to Woking, a 2-1 loss to Rochdale on Tuesday night but won their last three games prior to that. Arguably a hugely tough test away from home. Yeah definitely, he's um, obviously you see it happen a lot when a new manager goes in they get an upturn and to be fair to Doyle he's doing brilliant down there. They're, um, high pressing now, um, changed a little bit their style so he's doing really well. Been really well. He's brought a few of his own players in which obviously helps so I think they've been excellent. I mean, watch the game back there in tens, they press, they, they run. So, pretty much mirror what obviously he was like as a player. He's obviously an aggressive player, good, like unbelievable career, and he was always a tough competitor to play against. So, he pretty much made his team a mirror of, a image of himself. But tomorrow will be his 17th game in charge in his first managerial role, but we know how good a footballing person Michael Doyle is. He'll be right up for this one. Yeah, of course. As I just touched on, he's a serial winner, had an unbelievable career, played so many games up until obviously. Not too long ago, so and obviously with his non-playing stuff, he was obviously on the backroom staff at uh, Notts County, and he's obviously had a good upbringing in that side of it as well. So he's doing an excellent job, and fair play to Woke, and it's obviously some people would see it as a risk, but obviously when you know Michael Dollar's the career he had, and obviously the football and brain he's got, then you know it's going to be a good appointment. And there's no surprise he's doing really well. The two of Woking's um, last three wins have been against possession-based sides in Altrincham and Gateshead. Does this affect your approach in any way going into tomorrow? Uh, I think it's, it won't affect our approach. Obviously, we, we play how we play. Um, we don't come away from that too much. I know against Rochdale, we mixed it up because obviously that didn't deal with entries too well, so we, we identified that. But with Woken, to be fair, they pressed. It shows how difficult the test will be the fact that they've taken two wins against two playoff chasing teams. Obviously, we're hoping the same fate don't happen to us. So we'll go around and we'll have a game plan in place. We always tweak different things with different teams, so we'll see what we go out with. But we've got a game plan in place, and let's see if it pays off tomorrow. They're sitting near the bottom of the table and we know how tight it is down there this season. They'll be looking to get three points, as will we. What's the player mindset when you're looking to go up versus looking to stay up? Um, listen, it's, a, it's the old cliche, you don't want to be playing teams down the bottom toward the end of the season. People are scrapping and fighting for their lives. So, and you can see that in their performances. They've picked up 10 points in the last five games. So they're averaging two points a game, which is obviously unbelievable form. And that is the form that normally, if you can carry that across the season, that gets you into the playoffs, if not in a title contention. So... Listen, they're doing brilliant. He's doing brilliant now, especially of late. Um, it always takes time when you're trying to change your style a little bit, but they're now doing brilliant. It's a really tough test, and I think when you look at obviously current forms as he's gone in, they're, they're no way down the bottom. So we know how tough a task is going to be, and obviously when you add in the fact that they're fighting for their lives, and obviously we've got stuff to fight for as well, but it's, it's like livelihood and obviously mortgage stuff when you're down the bottom end of the table. We obviously don't want to get relegated, so they've got the extra bite, uh, and we'll obviously have the extra bite for our, what we're trying to achieve. We know we've been played by injuries and huge credit to the lads for keeping us up at the top of the table. How close are we to a fully fit squad? I don't think, I don't think you ever get everyone fully back. There's always, there always seems to be one or two, even when you think you've got a clear on it. So you never predict what's going to come. But we're definitely in a better place than what we were when this, this busy period started. So three, four weeks, we're definitely in a better place now. So we're thankful we're getting bodies back. Um, you obviously see people like Gormo, Cabamba obviously featuring off the bench. Jordan McGuire, Drew's fit, but was obviously cup tied. So his body's coming back, it's just now working up them, their fitness, obviously gearing up toward the last the last sort of eight, nine games. So we've got to gear them all up, bring them back gradually so we don't make sure we don't get any setbacks and then we'll just keep building toward this full squad. But we're getting there, we've got as their bodies coming back, which is a massive boost for the group. And you can see the atmosphere in the group um in the training session of the last few days, how like, the boost it brings the lads, obviously the reinforcements are back. I know we touched on it a few weeks ago, but it does give a massive boost and you've got big personalities in Gormo and Kabamba who are good lads in the group. They, they drive the energy so you can see out there the boys are bubbling away nicely. We announced today that Marvin Armstrong's joined York City on a permanent deal. He's certainly been an asset to the club. Yeah, definitely. Listen, he's an asset to most clubs at this level. He's an um, athletic lad, put his foot in, always gives 100% and to be fair to him, he scored a couple of goals as well. So, listen, he'll, he'll, hopefully he'll go and do well there. He deserves a, a chance to play regularly. He um, couldn't quite break into the team as regular what he would like and what we thought he would do. Um, but that's the way football goes. What it might not work out the way he wanted to hear, but it might do there. So he's still a brilliant player for the level, and he, he deserves to play a lot more games. And probably what he did do here, but the, the problem is we have the lads were on fire that were playing, and just didn't really get his chance. And when he did, he was 
was he unfit? Not not unfit, but it's hard to get match fit if you're only playing sporadically. So it'd be good for him to go and get regular game time, definitely. And also, always good to link up with a former manager that you've worked under quite closely from his time at Worthing. Yeah, of course, this is a great. I think it's a great move for all parties. I said he'll get more game time, which is what he wants, which is what every every footballer wants. The manager there obviously knows him and trusts him, so there should be no doubts about his game time. Now it's not like he's going in and the manager's not sure about him. They know each other, so he's bringing him into play, and obviously that's great for Marvin, great for his career. He'll go and play more regularly. 411 travelling bees at Bromley last week, a brilliant turnout, and hopefully we can bring similar numbers tomorrow. Brilliant. Listen, we, we always say every time we talk about the fans, the more we can get down, the more it helps the lads. Um, obviously, hopefully they weren't too disappointed with the result. Obviously, we know that the team we feel is not exactly what we would have wanted to do, but that's the way we were with injuries and, and cup tied and whatever else. So, um, so we've just got to keep coming and backing us. Obviously, we see, hopefully we see a similar number with, with us tomorrow at Woken, so it does drive the lads on. Obviously, we've got to try to get over the line as best we can and hopefully in the second or third position and get that home tight. So the fans will help us do that. Connor, thank you. Cheers, Thank you.